Rachel Hunter, and this time I'm on a journey through the Americas to discover more secrets to health, well-being, and long-lasting beauty. <laughs> Natural makeup. That is so crazy Beautiful. great. Oh my god, that's somebody's face. This time, I'm in Jamaica, a beautiful Caribbean island that's home to some of the fastest men and women on the planet. I'm sure you heard about a guy named Usain Bolt, right? So what's in their diet that makes them so quick? Oh, my god. What can I learn from the famous Rastafari way of life? Do you get a second high of smelling them? Yes, you can. <sighs> And how have these young Jamaican models taken over the runways of the world? How was it working with Donatella? She's nice. Very nice. <laughs> so what is the secret to such extraordinary physical health and beauty here? We don't eat anything that moves. Once it runs away from you, it is not something to eat. Yeah, man! Bob Marley once famously said, the most beautiful curve on a woman's body is her smile. And there's something about being in Jamaica that makes you want to smile a lot. And it's not just the sight of the stunning ocean and landscape. There's an edge and vibrancy in the air here. And the people have such a cool, unique sense of style. It just kind of knocks my socks off that a country actually embraces its complete individuality. Yeah. It really exists here in a pretty huge way. It's all about standing out in Jamaica. So if it is that you're in Jamaica, you're not standing out, then definitely you're not Jamaican. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Everybody's definition of beauty in Jamaica, I think, is a little bit different. Uh, some people may prefer a darker shade of person or a lighter shade of person. You know, plump. We're very fun. We are definition of fun. If you go anywhere, you can always pinpoint a Jamaican. Individuality is also at the heart of Jamaica's Rastafari culture. It might be best known for marijuana and reggae music, but it's their clean living and natural way of life that's drawn me to their village in the hills of Montego Bay. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Queen Bee. All right, this is <laughs> the lion paw. The lion paw. Greetings. Greetings. Yes, sir. Queen Bee's going to show me how the Rastafari use nature to improve their everyday lives. Coconut washes your heart. So <laughs> if you have bad man, then you could use some coconut water to wash your heart. Wash your heart. So what do you say? Thrones. Thrones. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rastafari eat a vegan-style diet and gather much of their food, medicinal treatments and beauty products from around the village. Queen Bee promises she can even find me a shade of lipstick that's growing in her own garden. Let's call a natto. Natural makeup. You literally burst the seeds and then... That is so crazy Beautiful. green. I have no idea what I just did, but it's amazing. And also, as blush, too, because you've put some on your cheeks. Like, that's all that you'd need to, to wear. I think I'm going to like it here. Wow, that blew my mind. That's pretty cool. This herb garden is our natural pharmacy. Is there a skin foundation growing on the tree here? Might be. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Nooni tree. Oh, my god, I know the Nooni tree. We met the Nooni tree in Fiji. I remember you can that smell, <laughs> and it is strong, but it is good for you. Used for colds, it's used for cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and I could go on and on. It's, it's also good for the skin as well. I have made Nooni soap. Really? Yeah. So this might be your foundation. OK. <laughs> good to see you, Tree. So this is a Cerasi. This is a very good blood cleanser, also good for the skin. Crush it, we blend it, and it's ready for soap making. Can I use this in my hair? Yes, if it's good for the skin, it's also good for the hair. OK, we've got a shampoo, uh, skincare products, also rashes, as well as blood cleansing. Amazing. A huge variety of plants grown here provide the Rastafari people with the food they need to sustain their natural diet. So these are almonds, and the skin of it is used as a fruit. 
Oh, yum. Yes, and it's back full with new trends. Your beauty products and your restaurant is right here in your back garden. Mother Earth again providing for her children. Rastafari drink no alcohol and describe their cuisine as energy and life-giving. But there is one more plant harvested here for its medicinal and spiritual benefits, the herb marijuana. In 2015, it became legal for Jamaicans to grow it for personal use. She's gorgeous. Does she smell? It's pretty strong. And I also use the in making soap. Do you get a second high of smelling them? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the village has been a wonderful surprise. And if I needed any more convincing the Rastafari culture can provide the guide to living well, then first man, as he's called, could be the one to convert me. So our food is not necessarily health food, it's love food. Oh, I love that. It's a difference. We're not eating animal not because we want to live longer, but because of the love of the animal. We don't want to see the animal die. Right. Yes. Right. Once it runs away from you, it is not something to eat. It's exactly. like having a, a boyfriend. If he runs away from you, <laughs> you got to leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, don't eat that. <laughs> Rastafari is not a noun. It is a verb. It's how you behave. It's your mannerism. It's the thing that you do. Yes, not how you look. <laughs> this is why I am Rastafari, because it urges you to be yourself, and then to find the harmony that can make you exist with others. The important thing is tolerance, but let it start with yourself. Oh, I uh, love this. Okay, okay, I love this. You when I'm ready to become a Rastafari. <laughs> there's wellness here, there's, there's beauty everywhere, but how does marijuana fit into all of this? We smoke marijuana a way of suppressing our ego to ensure that we could open our mind to the universal source. And it doesn't alter the mind. We use it for conversation. So it is a very important part of our culture. We grow our locks as a true identity of ourselves, a natural acceptance of who we are. Mm. We refuse to let go Africa as our physical and spiritual home. First man tells me possessions aren't important here. It is the richness of life that the Rastafari treasure. And of course, music. It's an expression of their happiness and peace. I've been given a drum so I can join the group. They tell me my drumming should match the beat of my heart. I have an irregular heartbeat. <laughs> Coming up, I find out more diet secrets from this amazing country. What makes Jamaicans so fast? I've been searching for this little guy for a long time. And so hot. Since I've been in Jamaica, I've had a police escort to get to places quickly because the traffic here is crazy. Up in the mountains, my life flashed before me several times. Oh my God. So I'm always pleased to be back in town where the traffic is still pretty bad, but I feel a little bit safer. Oh, many buses yeah. Lowest now. bus drivers, huh? <laughs> It's not just on the roads that Jamaicans are known for their speed. They're most famous for their pace on the track. Some people believe it's their starchy fruit and vegetable diet that makes them so quick. So I've come to Kingston's Coronation Markets to meet Chef Shay Stewart to discover the truth. This place looks absolutely incredible. It is. This is the heartbeat of Jamaica. I mean, you can come here and find all our fruits and vegetables, you know, meet the great people of Jamaica, you know, so. Okay. Yam and green bananas are a staple diet of most Jamaicans and they believe it's responsible for giving them an increased level of energy. I'm sure you heard about a guy named Usain Bolt, right? Oh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first human being ever to win three gold medals in the three same events over three Olympics. It's rumored that it's because of the yam and the banana that, they, that he eats. Wow. There's no real scientific research about it, but personally, as a Jamaican, I would love to think 
So yam and banana is like man and woman. They go, they go together. So how do you cook it? We actually boil it and eat it as a starch. Okay. Which has a lot of fiber in it. You know, it has a lot of calcium. We put it in a pot of what we call food. Right. I love that green banana and yam are such a massive part of their diet. They simply call it food. I'm not usually into starchy foods, but if it's good enough for Usain, then maybe I should give it a try. So we're gonna come to Donovan. Donovan is our food guy. And this is what I've been talking to you all day. Which one says That's our food. So it has the banana, boiled dumpling, the sweet potato, the yam. And that's, that's, that's a big part of our diet. So Donovan, you want to share a plate? Yeah, no problem, Line no up a plate. Give her a little of everything. Man. What we do is we'll have that in the base of the plate and yeah. just pour anything over Everything over, over the top it. of it. Thank you. I'm going to taste the yam. It's a bit drier. It's so good. Is there any butter in that, in the potato? No, no. You have yeah. that nice richness yeah. to it, right? It's been boiled in with the banana, which I'm actually going to taste right now. Very different tasting. I mean, the banana is not sweet at all. Very, very bland. But with the thyme and the the peppers, sweet peppers, right? it's amazing. And here we are on the market eating gourmet food. <laughs> I'm in love with Jamaican food. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm a huge fan of starchy veg. Oh my god, this is gigantic. Very fertile land here. <laughs> and looking around, there's an abundance of exotic fruit that I just have to try too. Mm. Yeah, I said Jamaicans love that fruit, especially me. It's good. This and is then, a sour sap. So this is known to be a very little super duper food, this as well. One piece. Yeah, what's it good for? Your nerves. Nerves. Yes. Yeah, so stress. The leaves yes. too. It's very good. Even the leaf. I love it. Oh my god. It's nice. I like it because it, it is. It's the sour sop. You like the leaf. Can I like sour? It's very nice. And I've been searching for this little guy for a long time. Thank you so much. It's, it's been my pleasure. incredible. Amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, no. Hopefully we'll see you again one oh, day. I will be. I'll be Enjoy here. Enjoy the sour sop. <laughs> It's not just the food Jamaicans are proud of. Their hair is another of their striking features. It's been a lifelong battle for me to tame my own natural curly locks. But here's some good news. In Jamaica, the F is back, according to local beauty blogger Natasha Lee. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, let's go. Yeah. When I was a child, I was tender-headed. I had thick, curly hair, and my mom didn't know how to care for my hair. So by the age of nine, I had chemically straightened my hair to make life more easier for myself and for my mother. I also had very, very, very curly hair, very wow. frizzy, ringlets, all the rest of it, and I also straightened it. It wasn't until three years ago that I let it go, and I chopped my hair off myself. Just completely, you just completely chopped off. your hair off. Small little afro, maybe about this high, and the rest was history. I've been natural since. Natasha reckons the secret to perfect curls lies in a product I thought was used as a treatment for constipation, castor oil. But not just any castor oil. What makes the Jamaican castor oil different from the castor oil that we see in the pharmacy? Right. Roast or castor bean. Right. And then the ash from roasting it is what's mixed with the oil to give it that rich color. So it's much more potent filled with lots of omegas, vitamin E, and it's good for an array of things. So this is Divine Living Essentials. Fantastic. So I personally prefer to use the castor oil with coconut in it. Right. Wow, the consistency is amazing. Yeah, it has a nutty burnt smell. Yeah. So it's not the greatest smell, but when you mix it with a carrier oil, like coconut oil, it helps. So diffuse it, diffuse it. And make sure I get it on my fingertips. Yeah. And then just gently massage my scalp with the product itself. So this helps with all, you know, growing, the con conditioning so of the root. It strengthens your hair, moisturizes your hair, but it also stimulates the hair follicles and right. blood circulation, which helps it to grow. Right.
it's not until just recently that Curly has made a big a comeback. Boom. A yeah. huge, yeah. Mm. And I see, you know, these beautiful women with afros and really embracing the curl. Embrace your true self, yeah. who you really are. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about this whole natural hair movement that's taking place. Yeah. No, it's gorgeous. Your hair's stunning. <laughs> I'm definitely taking home some castor oil. After 47 years, just maybe right here in Jamaica, I found the secret to no more bad hair days. Wow. Yeah. Next. I think I sleep you walk. <laughs> how local Jamaican fashion models are taking the world by storm. And I make my own fashion statement dance hall style. That's it, that's it. I'm in beautiful Jamaica, a place that reminds me so much of my young modeling days. I visited this region for countless photo shoots, the first when I was just 18. It's a very different place now. 20 years later, and it's local Jamaican models that are making the headlines. Turns out the Jamaican look is in hot demand these days from New York to Paris. All right, let me see you without your shirt now, John. Good. And this is the man they owe it to. Dwight Peters. He's a model agent with a great eye for local talent. That's like a sleepy one. <laughs> so, Dwight, what is the X factor of Jamaican beauty? Primarily, one of the, the feedbacks I get from major photographers or clients is that there is a texture to the Jamaican skin. A black model from Jamaica has a particular skin texture that just shines, I guess. And I've also noticed the diversity of bone structure here. Yes, and it's it's that historical mix. Right. Because, um, you know, our motto is out of many, one, you know, there were the Europeans, the Africans, the Indians, the Chinese, and over time, the mix mm. was inevitable. So you really see that as a reflection in the faces. I mean, you've had, you know, success after success. I mean, American Vogue is giving you the nod. It was always a part of my mission, though. Um, it was about, yes, you're going to get Jamaican models on the best runways. To be honest, I never expected it would have been happening at this level with this many models. Uh, Brad, for example. Hello, how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Very Ooh. tall. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, height matters. It does, it does. <laughs> Brad is one of Dwight's top models, and his path to becoming famous is remarkable. Actually, I was on my way from school, and um, I remember when I was on the bus, I saw this guy on the bus, but like he was getting off, but then he didn't bother. And then when I got off, and he came up to me and asked me to join modeling, but I wasn't, because I wanted to be a um, um, soldier back then. Wow. So modeling wasn't my thing. So you were like, no, 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 no. no. But I gave him my mom's number that night, that day, and he called my mom that same night, and then here I am. He now has a remarkable, absolutely incredible career working for Balmain, Givon, she, Hermes, Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, so many others. I am very happy, 100% happy. Amazing. <laughs> Johnny and his hair. Johnny. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We are working on a major campaign for him in Europe. Louis Vuitton, they're looking for a particular kind of boy for their exclusive for the season. And within two days, we heard that they're confirming him for the world wow. exclusive debut in Paris. JD uh, just got confirmed to be with Wilhelmina in New York. Emilio actually was booked by the fashion director for GQ Style. They did a very special uh, feature in Jamaica. And Romain, but you did Versace to I start. Did Versace. Then I went on doing Boglioli, right. then Montclair, and then Fendi. So it was really a really good experience for me. How was it working with Donatella? Donatella was extremely, extremely good. Or <laughs> Miss Versace Donatella. was very good. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. It's just it was a pleasure. No, it was amazing to meet you guys and good luck. Not that you guys need it, but it's it's pretty impressive. What about the local fashion here in Jamaica? After a week, I can't decide if it's a look that I can pull off at my age. But stylist Dexter Pottinger thinks he can make me look fabulous and sexy at 47. Welcome to Jamaica. Thank you. Fashion capital thank you, of thank the Caribbean. You. Dancehall is a style of fashion derived from reggae music. 
it has its own distinct look. We love to be different. Say we get this dress, we're not going to wear it as is, we're going to do some addition to it. Add some um, individuality to the dress. Perfect. And Dexter is convinced he can get me to like it. So we're going to find you a nice piece and then we'll see how we can, how we, see how we can spice it up. Yes, I'd to like... make it a bit more edgier and a bit more fashion sexy. Okay, cool. All right, so I have this lovely piece that I have to show you. Ready? One, two, three. Wow. I know you're going to want to add something to this. Dance hall has its own accessories. That's what's up. In Jamaica, when a girl is very fashionable and very rude, you call her like a bad girl. So I'm a bad girl right now? Um, no. With, with a bit more legs showing, it could be a bad girl. <laughs> So it also has its own moves. You do your thing and you, you're going on, you know? <laughs> With your bad girl necklace. See, guys, it's all an illusion. If I didn't open my mouth right now and be Love. somewhat of a nice human being. <laughs> Look in the camera yeah. and see. What do you want? Get say, out of my head. Say bad girl. <laughs> wow. Oh Look at you. Love. The chain is just stunning. The layering is amazing. These are wings. Oh, I might get an audition for Star Wars with this one. Do you have a getting ready song? Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, let's let's party to one. Yeah, okay, Come good. On. I'm all into it. Oh, now? <laughs> yeah. Party. Then pop, pop it, pop it, pop, pop, pop. I might get through that and no. get stuck in pop, the position. Pop. No, no, just pop it, pop it. So, booty. You're gonna fade the booty. Just a bit. That's, that's it. That's it. So, pop a lock in. Hmm, I'm not sure dance or style is for me, but 20, okay, 30 years ago, definitely. Nice. I love Jamaica. It's been a wonderful surprise to me. There's this huge melting pot of different races and religions that have kind of merged into this country. Therefore, the people have an incredible diverse sense of beauty and look of beauty to see both male and female gorgeousness was just awesome. There's an abundance of incredibly beautiful models. The girls were just like these genetic freaks of nature, of beauty. And the Rastafari just really embraced a, a culture that I hadn't fully understood before. It could feel nothing but incredible energy, love, well-being. It just really touched me. But as always, it's the people who leave the greatest mark on me during my travels. <laughs> and this little island didn't disappoint. Did I enjoy myself in Jamaica? Yeah, man.